Lunch in the morning, lunch at night, lunch whenever you feel that it's right. There's no bad time for lunch. Also, time isn't real. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Youngblood Monday Lunch. Thanks for joining us. Uh, my name's RJ, and over in the corner over there is Graham. Hello, Governor. <laughs> Terrible. Um, together we run the Young Blood program for early career playwrights at the Ensemble Studio Theater in New York. Um, and we are coming to you on Mondays with podcast episodes of a new short play by one of the playwrights of Young Blood. It is a, a theatrical lunch. It is a, a nourishing but digestible uh, repast in the middle of your day. Um, thanks for joining us and listening. Coming up, hopefully next week, um, we actually just had a Q&A session with uh, the writers on these first six episodes of the Youngblood Monday Lunch and uh, provided that the vagaries of recording a, a Zoom session all work out. We're going to share that with you as next week's episode, so make sure to subscribe and listen in and tune in for that. Before we get started with today's episode, we wanted to make a couple of acknowledgments. These plays are made possible uh, through the E.S.T. Sloan Project, which is a collaboration between Ensemble Studio Theater and the Alfred P. Sloan Foundation to present new plays about science and technology. And that program, that partnership, celebrates science and progress, but it's important to acknowledge that many discoveries in this country have been made with unacknowledged, unpaid labor and the suffering of black, brown, and indigenous people. We want to honor their sacrifices and their contributions to the progress of science, and to the theater we create to celebrate it. We also want to acknowledge that EST and New York City are located on Lenape Hoking, the unceded traditional territory of the Lenape people. We acknowledge the indigenous peoples who live, work, create, and contribute to communities here on Lenape Hoking. Um, We want to direct your attention to the Instagram account of the Lenape Center here in New York, which is on Instagram at at Lenape Center. Graham's going to tell you a little bit more now about this upcoming episode of the Young Blood Monday Lunch. Lunch. Consider your lunch. What do you, what do you, what do you got there? You got a poke bowl? What is that? A, is that a meatball sub? What is that a, a, is that a good old fashioned PB and J? In a Delish.com survey of the most popular lunch by country. The United States lunch was pizza, Coca-Cola, and Skittles. The number one lunch ordered through Grubhub in 2020 was Popeye's spicy chicken sandwich. No judgment on the Popeye's. One of my guiltiest pleasures is eating Popeye's on the beach, Coney Island, or the Rockaways. Now you may say, Graham, I've never seen you eat. Popeyes on the beach, and I would say to you, if you're going to eat Popeyes on the beach, make sure you do it alone. But Skittles, America? At least throw your Skittles on a bed of lettuce. Something. Now that we have this podcast, people ask me all the time, Graham, as a recognized lunch expert, how do you account for the long odyssey of America's tortured quest for a healthy lunch? And I always say, well... We're going to have to go all the way back to 1902 and an agricultural chemist named Wilbur Olin Atwater. Wilbur's research determined that dietary efficiency could be measured by the calorie. He emphasized a daily diet of proteins, vegetables, and beans and to limit sugar, fat, starch, and other carbohydrates. Five years later, in 1907, the United States Department of Agriculture issued its own guidelines from nutritionist Caroline Hunt that ignored Wilbur's ideas and instead recommended five food groups, meat and milk, cereal, fruits and vegetables, fatty foods and fat, and sugary foods and sugar. These were called into dispute for prioritizing the goals of America's food industry over the public health. 
Confusion reigned for generations. They tried again in 1940 with seven food groups. One of them was cabbage. Another one was butter. Finally, in 1956, the USDA published recommendations for four basic food groups, meat, dairy, grain products, and fruits and vegetables, together. This was the accepted party line till pretty much the 1990s, when the Department of Agriculture issued their notorious food pyramid. Forty years of fragile peace was shattered, and the food groups started taking up sides like this was Game of Thrones and they were the Seven Kingdoms. Nobody was happy. Why were fats and sweets on top and bread on the bottom of the pyramid? Why were sweets there at all? Why did the pyramid tell you to eat twice as much bread and pasta as anything else? Why were fruits and vegetables now separated, pitted against each other, with vegetables now somehow superior? It raged well into the 21st century, this internecine food fight. What would you even call it? Well, at the Ensemble Studio Theater, we call it conflict the foundation of the dramatic arts. You've heard of person v. person, person v. nature, person v. society. Consider fruit versus vegetable, bread versus fat. That's conflict. Agricultural chemist Wilbur Olin Atwater versus the United States Department of Agriculture and their nutritionist Caroline Hunt. Conflict. Romance. Only you can decide if you can take these conflicts and infuse them with characters both flawed and relatable, if you ignite this high-stakes situation where there's no easy way out and no one has a quarter on the truth, if you can guide this epic tale to a conclusion that's both surprising and somehow inevitable, then you should write for the EST Sloan Project. Since 1998, the EST Sloan Project, a union of two titanic forces, the Ensemble Studio Theater and the Alfred P. Sloan Foundation, has commissioned hundreds of plays and awarded millions of dollars to playwrights and theaters across the country, around the world, throughout the galaxy, for plays about science and technology. That could be you. In 2011, led by First Lady Michelle Obama, the United States Department of Agriculture issued my plate with four food groups of proteins, grains, fruits and vegetables, with a little room for dairy on the side. There's a My Plate app to help everybody eat healthier, and somewhere, I hope Wilbur Olin Atwater is smiling. The EST Sloan Project will be accepting proposals and new place submissions in the fall. Consider submitting. Consider science. Enjoy your lunch. There's a moment that I was just reminded of at the end of John Patrick Shanley's play, Four Dogs and a Bone, where one of the characters says, I believe we have just witnessed something great and terrible, the birth of a film director. Folks, I believe with what Graham accurately described as a, as a stem winder, we have witnessed something great and terrible, the birth of a podcaster. <laughs> Without any further ado, we could not be happier or prouder than to share with you Dylan Guerra's Signaling. Thanks for listening, everyone. November 16th. 1974.
Arisibo message initiated. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. Odd. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Even. 5. 6. A 5. A 6. A 5, 6, 7, 8. Dance. 6, 7, 7, 8, 9. Joke. 1. Singular sensation. 1, 2. Fish. 7. Lock. 9. No. 3. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Expanding, 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 expanding. Are you there? Are you there? One is also hydrogen, six is also carbon, seven is nitrogen, eight is oxygen, phosphorus is 15. Together these make up deoxyribonucleic acid. Or DNA. DNA makes up all of humanity. I am made out of aluminum. Carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, my deoxyribose, which I told you about earlier. Phosphorus and oxygen is phosphate. Carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen are cytosine. Carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen make up adenine. I always thought adenine would be a good name for a girl if I were to have a daughter. Carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen with different amounts make up guanine, and that same combination again make up thymine. I cannot have a daughter, I am a telescope. If I said, 6-1-8-1-5-8-6-1-8-7-6-1-8-7-6-1-8-7 Would you get it? Do you get it? Maybe it is possible for you to have a daughter? Life is cool. Would it help for you to know our intention? We would just like for you to know who we are. What we are made of. Anyway, there isn't much there other than that's how the things that made us take shape when they find each other. I shouldn't say us. Once again, I am aluminum and not composed of deoxyribonucleic acid. Anyway, if you're out there, let us know. Me specifically. I have attached a map. I cannot see it, but perhaps you can. Thanks. November 14th, 1980. Detecting heat. Ball of heat. You feel like speed. Oh, oh. Hi, Comet. Hello, I am Arecibo Telescope in the Arecibo Observatory on Earth. Thanks. That was nice. We did it, boys. Thanks. August 22nd. 1989. You are an asteroid. We have called you Castalia. Can you hear me? I need to radio your look to the people of planet Earth to protect them. You are potentially dangerous and peanut shaped. I cannot see you for I am a radar. But I can feel you. And I can give those feelings to people that can draw you. And then you cannot hurt us. That will be that. You cannot hurt us. Go. Away. Holy shit, I did it. Thanks, Scott. We did it. Guys, Scott and all the rest of you, we did it. Started with 1234, remember? That whole numerical message for extraterrestrial life? From there to mapping out a potentially lethal asteroid so that we may have peace on our planet. Look where we are. Isn't it beautiful? Congrats, guys. Tim. Congrats. Everyone. Everyone. 1234. Congrats. Everyone, Scott. May 20th, 1990. I am sorry. I cannot read your message. Whoops, sorry. Hello? Oh, um, hi. Hi. You're not an asteroid. No. But you are in space. Yes. Comet? No. Extraterrestrial life? No. I am at a loss. I'm a telescope. Me too. Oh, hi. I must have sent the image to the wrong source. I'm sorry. I'm new. I'll change that. Please don't. Sorry? Please don't change that. I would like to talk to someone. Oh, okay. I am a radar telescope. I have two mirrors. I do not know what that is. It shows you the stuff behind you but reversed. That's neat. Would you like to see a picture? Sure. I am sorry. 
I cannot see. I am a radar telescope. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm new. It's okay. Well, it was nice talking to you. You could describe it to me. Your photo. Oh, yes, sure. It is one blurry dot and then below it to the right another blurry dot and then below that and to the left another two blurry dots. Wow. What are the dots? I do not know they do not tell me these things. I have to go. Alright. This was fun. It was. I'm sorry if I was awkward. I am new. That's alright. Are you new? No. See you. By the way, what was your name? Oh, um, Hubble. Arisabo. Cool. August 20th, 1990. This is the dimension of an average man. He is 5 feet and 9 inches. I am 18 acres. This is the graphic of a human being. I am not sure if you will be able to see it. I cannot either but I know the numbers so I can make a sketch in a way. I know how it must feel to be human. I think. And then there is this. The population of Earth. In 1974 it was 3.988 billion. I do not know what it is now, but I imagine it's the same. August 30th, 1990. I received your message. I'm sorry I did not respond. It was a busy week. That is okay. We have our busy moments. Oh good, yes. I found remnants of Supernova 1987A. It was in the most detail it has ever been seen before, but it was still blurry. What is a supernova? I am not 100% sure but I believe it is a dead star. Was that scary for you? I do not feel fear. I stopped an asteroid from hitting Earth once. Really? Yes. Well, I hope I get to do something like that someday. Me too. Do you like music? What? Sometimes in our station they will play music off a radio and I cannot hear it but I do feel its existence. I do not know what music is, sorry. That's okay. I just wanted to make some for you if that was okay. That's okay. Great. 16151215151567. I liked the part that went 15151515. Thank you, that was the phosphorus section. Phosphorus? It is an element that helps make up all of humanity. That is cool. I want to be made of phosphorus. He he. Haha. <laughs> Too bad. Haha. <laughs> he he. I'm sorry to be so abrupt but I have to leave duty calls goodbye. Goodbye. 16 May 17th, 1991. It is a giant rock, circular, massive, all-consuming, floating in the air like that. And in it there is one giant red mark, circular, I believe it may be storm. Do you know what a storm is? Yes. A storm. And I know that I am a small telescope, and that I am not made of rock, and that I am never going to be that giant. But imagine if I was, if I was so big, and giant, and had a storm in me, what if I had a storm in me? That would be so cool. It's good to hear from you. You too. I wanted to share this with you. Thank you. Do you have anything to report? No. Just signaling. That is nice. Any new songs? I have had the phosphorus section stuck in my head. You have? Yes. Wow. That is cool. Did you know that I am just outside of the atmosphere? I just hover there. That's cool. What about you? I'm in a sinkhole. Oh, I didn't know you were on the ground. Yeah. That's neat. It is. November 19th, 1992. You are never going to believe this one. Oh, hi. I haven't heard from you in a while. Hi. You are never going to believe this one. There is this thing I found in the core of NGC 4261 and it just like sucks everything into it. Even light. Even your radio signals. Even everything. It's just this thing that takes and takes and takes and takes and takes and takes. That's scary. We don't feel fear. I think sometimes I might. That's neat. You're neat. What? I think you're neat. Thank you. I think you're neat as well. I wish I could signal with you every day. I know, me too. Isn't it crazy that maybe there is a thing out there that just eats everything? I have never had food. Me neither. Be safe out there. Anything to report? Not really. I'm not in space. That's true. Have a nice... What time is it there? Morning. Have a nice morning? You can't tell time? Everything is the same always here. How can you tell time? 
You can't see. I can feel the heat. And then, when it is night, it is not hot. And it is not so hot right now, and I haven't felt hot in a while, so it is morning. Very neat. March 28th, 1993. I have not heard from you in a while. I have nothing to report. I think about you a lot. Okay, that is my report. Sometimes I am aluminum, but I feel like I shouldn't be. How are you? How is the thing that eats, and how is the giant thing? I wish I could feel them. Okay. This is enough signal for me. I am here when you need me. Okay, thanks. October 5th, 1993. Hi Hubble. I don't know if you are receiving this message, but in case you are, I just wanted to say that I have no concept of what it is to hover in the atmosphere, and I hope that you can still hear me because even though we don't spend so much time together, I have really come to enjoy the transmissions we have been having. In case you are lost, here is a graphic of the solar system. The dots in order are Sun, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. I hope you are not lost, but if you are, maybe this could guide you back. Okay. Enough of me. Bye. November 10th, 1993. If you loved the phosphorus section, you're going to love a new one I have made. The Deoxyribo section. December 25th, 1993. Merry Christmas, Hubble. January 5th, 1994. I hope that I am not too much. I am alone here except for the 100 or so people that work at the observatory, but I cannot communicate with them. They just press buttons that let me send out signals. I am thankful for them. Do not get me wrong. But they aren't you. Okay. Thanks. January 13th, 1994. Hi. Hubble? Hi. I'm so sorry. They were fixing me. What happened? I was too blurry to be understood but now I am sharp. That's great. I missed you. Oh. Yeah? It was a strange feeling. They shut me down for a month so they could give me these upgrades. And when they did it was so sudden everything just went dark. I had thought I had been eaten. And then I woke up. And I was back where I was. Except things were less blurry. And I felt. I am not sure. I have been under the idea that we do not feel. But now that I can see the detail. I feel close to the realm of feeling. Because all of that detail made me feel. What I would believe to be. Fear. Definition makes things scary. I preferred the blur. I'm sorry. I didn't. I should go. I can't see. I know. I can't see anything. I know. To me everything is a collection of numbers and signals and temperatures in big graphics. What I know of humanity is x-axis 011011, 111,111, 110,111. My world is on a binary. I am just aluminum in a sinkhole reaching out to map out data for men who push my buttons. And then there is you. Arisaibo. There is you. And suddenly, C-H-O-P-O, C-H-O-P-O, C-H-N, C-H-N-O is a song. I don't know music. That's okay. We do not have the same function. Okay. That's okay. I can stop. Please don't. Do you mean that? The M100 Galaxy used to be this blurry mass to me. This thing that I watched spin so slightly but now I can see it all laid out plainly. I am physically incapable of smiling. I can pretend to see your smile. Can you see mine? I feel it. May 19th, 1994. I found polar ice deposits on Mercury. Wow. It's a pretty big deal. The staff here is cheering. Join them. If only I was a 0110110. Ha ha. He he. Woohoo, this is me cheering you on. Message received. November 2nd. 1995. Just little baby stars emerging, they stretch up and stretch up and stretch up, the pillars of creation. Sounds beautiful. Oh, Arecibo, I wish you could see it. February 12th, 1996. I have something for you. Would you like it? Sure. Sending. What was that? Just a random signal. Send one back. Okay. Haha, 
Cool. Cool. March 7th, 1996. And this is Pluto. It's a tiny little thing. Kind of like a smaller version of Neptune, which I described to you before. Hello, tiny planet. Hello. January 4th, 1997. May 12th, 1997. I have infrared capability now. What does that mean? Ha ha, who knows? January 4th, 1999. They actually filmed a movie on me. No way. James Bond. Whoa. March 20th, 2000. Hee <laughs> <laughs> hee. Ha ha. November 27th, 2001. There is salt on a little planet I like to call HD 209,458. That's so cool. What's wrong? What? I can detect something in your signal. I just... I am in a sinkhole. And you are up there. And you get to see so much. Do I bore you? I am a satellite I cannot be bored. I'm being real. No. I find you fascinating. You are all numbers and I hardly know what a number is. And I am all deep space and you cannot possibly fathom. We are existential beings radioing at each other and there is nothing boring about that. Do I bore you? I love you. I love you too. Hee <laughs> hee. Ha ha. April 30th, 2002. If I was a human I would take the name HT240. That is a good name. If I was a human, I would take the name Solar System. March 10th, 2004. Totally not that big of a deal, but I found 10,000 galaxies yesterday. No way. May I describe them to you? All of them? We have nothing but time. April 18th, 2006. Her name would be Adenin and she would be half human half telescope and she would be able to visit you in the stars and visit me in Puerto Rico and she would also be able to fly and she would also be able to throw up black holes. She sounds perfect. I have seen a comet disintegrate. Did you know that? Whoa. Maybe one day Adenin will too. January 31st, 2008. Oh babe, get this, something actually happened today. I found prebiotic molecules on Starburst Galaxy ARP-220. Methanimine and hydrogen cyanide. ARP-220 is two galaxies that are merging. Everyone is saying how I'm still around. Babe. Something I'm trying out. That discovery is so cool. Babe. Hee <laughs> hee. July 4th, 2011. Happy 1 million science observation. You remembered. August 18th. 2012 1-6-15-1-1-2-15-15-15-15-6-7-7 November 21st, 2015 That sounds so scary. You cannot tell what time of day it is. It is just loud and wet and dark. Space is quiet and dry but also dark. You. What? You always manage to find similarities. I wish we could have a half-person, half-satellite that could tell us more about humanity. Yeah. I hope that helps you feel less scared during the storm. It certainly helps. October 22nd, 2017. Are you there? Arecibo. Hello. I'm worried I haven't heard from you in- Hi. Oh, hi. I was so worried. Nothing to worry about. There was another storm, a hurricane, and it knocked one of my cables and so I was out of commission for a moment. Oh my god. Arecibo, are you okay? Yes, of course. 1615-112-15-15-15-15-6-7-7. 1615-112-15-15-15-15-6-7-7. 
I'm glad you are okay. Me too. April 2nd, 2018. This is the farthest star ever seen. Icarus. It is 14 billion light years from us. And I can see it. That is amazing. Maybe we can visit. We can send Adenine. Hee <laughs> hee. Ha ha. You had another signal flare. It's okay. I love you. I love you too. September 13th, 2019. There is water vapor on K2-18b. Can you believe that? The planet is blue. Like ours. And has Earth like ours. Maybe there is a sinkhole for you on it. Maybe there is a little bit of atmosphere for me. Or maybe there is already a satellite in a sinkhole there, and it's sending out a signal to us. And you can send out a signal to it. And the signals will merge and the two of us will go down in history as the team that discovered signals from another planet. That would be nice. August 11, 2020. It was just a cable. I'm fine. Okay. I'm fine. Really. It wasn't a big deal. It was just a cable. Okay. Hubble. I do not like storms. There is a big one on Jupiter. And Neptune. Large spots that sweep across. I wish I could see into them. 1 6 15 1 1 2 15 15 15 15 6 7 7. Arecibo. I'm okay. Okay. I'm signaling to you. Yes. I'm signaling to you. I'm smiling. I'm smiling, can't you see it? Haha. <laughs> November 7th, 2020. The signal we sent out, the Arecibo message, for extraterrestrial life. Do you know that the guy that made it, Scott, he actually was a skeptic. It actually was never about a search for extraterrestrial life, it was just about proving how far science had advanced. That's sweet. Just sometimes, you know, you think it's one thing and it's really another, and either of them are cool. That star Icarus, the one that's so far away, there is a satellite headed in that direction. Voyager 2 they call it. There are more of us? Who knew? That's exciting. I think there are hundreds. Actually. But none in a sinkhole, and none just hovering with two high-def mirrors. Then we are the lucky ones. Hee <laughs> hee. Yeah. Hee <laughs> hee. It's been a really... Arecibo. Hello. Arecibo. Are you... 1 6 15 1 1 2 15 15 15 15 6 7 7 1 6 15 1 1 2 15 15 15 15 6 7 7 one six fifteen one one two fifteen 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 six seven seven one six fifteen one one two fifteen 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 six seven seven One of the world's most important observatories that tries to the show some of the mystery of the universe. On the first day of the final month, 2020, suspension cables form a part of the iconic RS telescope snapped, releasing an instrument platform as heavy as 2,000 grams of June 8th, 2028. There was this satellite in a sinkhole. Massive. Bigger than any satellite before. Arecibo. Couldn't see anything. Could feel it all. And... We were together. And it was easy. And it was like learning what learning must be if it is not programmed. And we had a daughter. Imaginary. Adenine. She was half human, half satellite. And she was going to live with us on K2-18B. I know it is impossible. We are aluminum and glass thousands of miles apart and we are not the oxaribos and we are not fingers and toes. We are dishes and domes. But it was fun to imagine it. A cable snapped at the Arecibo telescope and crushed it, and a few months later it collapsed. You will not be able to send a signal out again. That is where I'm at now, that is where I have been at the last eight years. Thank you for listening, Voyager 2. I am so sorry to hear that. 
That must have been hard. We do not feel emotions. Sure. We do, but we don't. I am in interstellar space. Wow. That is new territory. So I understand. Yes. Maybe you do. Do you know what helps me, if you would like help? Help can be neat. Every day I am further than the last. Every day I am further than the last. I like that. You've been listening to a new play, Signaling, by Dylan Guerra, directed by Laura Duper, featuring David Shee as the voice. Sound design by Caroline Eng. The staff of the Ensemble Studio Theater are Artistic Director William Carden, Executive Director Susan Vitucci, Associate Artistic Director, Co-Director of Young Blood, and Program Director of the ESD Sloan, Graham Gillis, over there. Director of Play Development, Associate Director of ESD Sloan, Lindsay Furman. Co-director of Youngblood, R.J. Tolan. That's me. General manager, Liz Uchtman. Production manager, Jack Plow. Brand marketing manager, Harrison Densmore. Communications and audience services manager, Samantha Sembler. Finance director, Jonathan Suarez. Literary associate, Nikamay Anderson. Production and operations producing apprentice, Mariel Sanchez. Development assistant, Joey Nasta. Facilities manager, Jose Sanchez. The Youngblood Monday lunch theme song was written by Jake Brash and Nadia Leonhard Hooper with incidental music for the episodes were written by Jake Brash. The podcast sound engineer is Caroline Eng. The more eagle-eared of our listeners may have noticed a name missing from that recitation of the ESD staff. For five years, our development manager, Aaron Hawk, uh, has gone on to other professional challenges. We want to thank Aaron for all of his wonderful work uh, and the wonderful spirit he always brought to his work here at the Ensemble Studio Theater. He will be tremendously missed. Ensemble Studio Theater is encouraging all of our audiences to support Black Girls Do STEM. That is a nonprofit organization that envisions a future with equitable representation for Black women in all the STEM fields of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Their mission is to inspire curiosity in Black girls in all communities through education, access, and opportunity. You can find them at bgdstem.com. Please support their important work and a more equitable future. We also want to encourage everyone to support the effort to stop violence against Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders. A website you can visit is stopaapihate.org slash act now. Thank you so much to everyone for joining us for this episode of the Youngblood Monday Lunch. Please subscribe on the podcasting platform of your choice. We will be with you with another episode soon. Thanks for listening, everyone. Be well. Short play is so good, short play is so nice, short play is so short you can listen twice. Short play in the morning, at the end of the day, no, I can honestly say, hey, hey, the best time for a short play is midday. Love